Hi, I'm Rhys Bowen and I'm talking to you from our house in Arizona, where we normally spend the winter months. Normally we're long gone back to our house in California, but unfortunately right now we are stuck here because we can't drive between the two places. It's not a bad place to be trapped. We have blue skies outside, we have palm trees, we have mountains, we have flowers, we take walks in the neighborhood. But unfortunately this week, the temperature is going to be 105, which means we're stuck in the house by day. This for me is a good thing as I have a deadline looming and I have to finish a book. I'm finishing up this book on set in Venice, both in the past and the present. And when I'm not doing that, I have to do interviews, podcasts, Zoom meetings with book clubs, which all mean that I have to put on some makeup and brush my hair occasionally and actually get dressed in real clothes. It's quite fun. When I'm not doing these things, I've amused myself with doing some painting and artwork. I play my keyboard and I've been doing a jigsaw puzzle, which I'm finding extraordinarily hard. I'm really awful at jigsaw puzzles. Can you do them? I'd like to read you a little bit from one of my books. It's my latest book and it's called Above the Bay of Angels. It's about a young woman with a dangerous secret who becomes a chef to Queen Victoria and is taken with her to the south of France, where she encounters political intrigue, a murder and a little romance. This scene is when she first arrived in Nice. In front of the hotel, I noticed the most wonderful gardens. The walkways were lined with massive palm trees and the fronds whispered and crackled as they swayed in the stiff, stiff breeze that now came up from the sea. I walked carefully raked paths, pausing to sniff when a particularly intoxicating smell came to me. The trees with yellow powder puffs of flowers had the sweetest scent. I sat on a bench under one such tree and looked around me, almost believing I might be in heaven. Then tiredness from a sleepless night on the train overcame me, and I must have drifted off for to sleep because I heard a voice saying in French, stay exactly where you are, do not move. I sat up instantly alert and found myself staring at a fashionably dressed woman. On her head was a small jaunty hat and she carried a fringed silk parasol to ward off the sun's rays. Her stare was fixed on me and I looked around to see if I might be in some kind of danger or even breaking a rule. It did occur to me that this garden was reserved for hotel guests and that did not include servants. I fought back the urge to stand up since she'd told me not to move. Madame, I asked in French, is something amiss? Nothing, she said, coming towards me now. In fact, it's just perfect. What is? I began now to wonder if she was perhaps a little touched. You are my sweet child, she said. You're just what I've been looking for. Now it crossed my mind that she might be an elegant madam trying to recruit me for one of the houses of ill repute. She came to sit beside me. Are you staying at the hotel? Yes, I replied, I've just arrived. I'm a member of the Queen uh, of Lady Balmoral's party, sent in advance to make sure everything is perfect. Of course, she said, Lady Balmoral, eh? She gave me a knowing little wink. So silly when we all know her. So you're English. She'd reverted to my language, and this confirmed my suspicion that she was a countrywoman of mine. Even though her French was flawless, there was a slight hint of foreignness in her accent. I am. Might one know your name? Could I tell her the truth, I wondered. She didn't need to know my little masquerade. I'd probably never meet her again. But the expatriate circle might be a small one. It's Helen Barton, I said. Delighted to meet you, Helen. She held out a dainty gloved hand. I'm Mary Crozier. How do you do? I shook hands formally. Are you also staying at the hotel? Oh, no, I live here. You see that villa to our right? That's mine. The Villa Angelica. Silly name, don't you think? My husband's whim. He said the view was so pretty that angels would want to live here. He does get whims from time to time. I looked down at a romantic villa set amid lovely gardens. I thought of her surname. Your husband is French. He is. Le Marquis de Crozier, a dashing Frenchman. My family thought him quite unsuitable when we met at a Paris ball. But I told them the best they could do for me was a mere baronet or possibly a viscount. And this was a marquis. I have to say I never regretted it. As dashing as he is, he's proved to be remarkably faithful. And I've given him small, four, I've given him four healthy sons, so all is well. She paused and gave a little sigh. I do miss England from time to time, London theatre, scones with clotted cream. But now that the Riviera is becoming a place to winter, I can be amongst my own people again. I think it's wonderful, I said. If I lived here, I'd never want to move. 
The French can be rather tiresome, you know, she said. Lots of gossip and intrigue and who is sleeping with whom. Luckily, Francois finds it as tedious as I do. That's why we escaped from Paris in the first place and built this villa. Which brings me to my current quest. Are you free this evening? Are you finding it as hard as I am to be creative? I find that this much of my brain is taken up with worry, which leaves only about this much for creativity. So I've asked to, they've, they've asked me to give you a couple of tips to spur creativity and to get rid of writer's block. One thing I find that's really lovely is to escape. So play a game with your family where you sit at a table, you shut your eyes and you say, guess where I am? You say, I'm on a lovely beach and the waves are lapping up my feet and there's coconut palms over my head and I'm holding a large Mai Tai. Yes, I'm in Hawaii. And the next person takes over. The other thing to do is to journal. My son, who's a life coach, suggests that you journal every day. You write down three wonderful, good and surprising things that have happened that day and three things you have to worry about. And then you see if you can cross out the worry things. That's a great thing for me. I've also been asked to give you a writing prompt, those of you who like to write. My prompt is an easy one. It is, you are in an upstairs room, a prisoner, and soon they will be coming to. That's the end of my prompt. So stay safe, everybody. I love you all, and I hope to see you in the near future in person. Bye.